Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is iframes in HTML for code reuse and hacking. So one of the big issues that you're going to, to run into when you start hand coding web pages is that you are not going to have to want to retype the exact same code over and over and over and over again. So if you create a menu bar for your web page and you have five different pages on that web page, you want to be able to type out that menu bar once and then not have to mess with it again. So in the old days when you had to do HTML programming, if you wanted to create a menu for your website, for all your web pages, that meant that you would actually have to code that menu into every single page. That was a real pain in the butt. Well, what iframes allow you to do is iframes allow you to reference an outside file and use the contents of that file and have them written in automatically into the HTML file that you are looking at. So basically, instead of having to write out all the code, you know, href equals blah 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 home, close a, href equals blah 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 about, you know, instead of having to do all that, you can simply put in the iframe tag and it will go grab the information from an outside file. So if you create a menu once, you can then reference that menu onto four, five, twenty, a hundred and twenty-five different web pages. If you need to edit that menu, you can edit it once in the, in the menu HTML file, you don't have to go back to those 225 different HTML files. So that's the first reason that iframes is really good. Then the second reason iframes is good is because for, let's say, some of the gray hat hacking, one of the issues that comes up is let's say you go to somebody else's website and you'd like to be able to collect some information or you'd like to be able to do things uh, from interaction on their website. Well, what iframes allow you to do is in some circumstances, you're actually able to run code off of somebody else's website. So you could drop, so if they allow, let's say in the comment section, they allow HTML code, you could put an iframe in there that would drop cookies onto anybody viewing that comment. Or you could put an iframe in there that would log traffic or do other things. So this is one way, and, and if you're doing something like hacking, you can do social engineering to basically have scripts run even when uh, you don't actually own or administer a website. So that's why iframes are really cool. So to really show you how this works, let's go over to the computer right now so I can start uh, start showing you how, how all this actually operates in the real world. So here we have two files right now. So this is the test.html file. So this is the file that we are going to actually be running. Then we have this iframe.html file, and this is the file that is going to be referenced for the first parts of our demonstration. So right now, I have Notepad, so I've written out all this uh, code in Notepad++, which, as I say, is, is a very good tool, especially for writing out basic code. So, if we go over to the iframe.html, what I want to show you is all that I have in the iframe.html file is h1 test. This is a test that I am doing because I want to close h1 tag. So that is all that is in the iframe.html file. Now when we go to the test.html file, this is where I actually write out all of our normal HTML code. So I open the HTML, um, I open and close the head, I open the body, and then at different places here, I am inserting that iframe in different ways. So in order to use an iframe, what you're going to do is you're going to have the the, uh, the bracket iframe space src equals then double quotation marks and then you're going to put the path 
to the file that you are including. So since these are in the exact same folder, it's just iframe.html. Uh, if this is on a different website entirely, you could actually type out http colon slash slash whatever the website is. But basically all we're doing here is iframe src equals whatever you want the iframe to be, close quotation marks, close, and then all you do is you close the iframe tag here. So you don't you don't put anything here in the middle. You just you just keep that 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 tag uh, completely free. So I have done the iframe in a few different ways here. So in this first way, when we run this, you're going to see that the first way looks like this. So this is a test that I'm doing because I want to, and this is the first iteration. Now this first iteration you're going to see has a little border by default. So you have to decide whether or not you want a border like this. If you decide you don't want a border like that, you can see there's a break here, and then I iterate the iframe again, but you do a after the, uh, the target that you're putting in the iframe, you can do space seamless. If you type in seamless, S-E-A-M-L-E-S-S, -S -S, what happens is you don't get that little border. So if we go back to the test, we can see that the second iteration here is the seamless version where you can't even tell that it was inserted or it's any different um, than, than, than the, the code that was written into this manually. Then finally, we have another break, and I want to show you that you can modify the iframe in many different ways. So you can mo modify the border uh, 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 size, you can modify the height, you can modify the width, you can modify many things. So what I did is I simply put width equals, and then double quotation marks 100, so this is for pixels, pixels, close double quotation marks, and then that is where here, down at the bottom, you see that this only uh, has a width of 100. So these are all the different things that you can do with the basic HTML text. So just to show you, if I go over here to iframe, I can go here and modify this once, and I can say, isn't this really cool, all right? All I have to do is save this, when I go here to test, I refresh, and now look, every single iteration has changed. So I only had to modify this text in one place, and it, it actually went out and it changed in every place that, that the iframe referenced it. So this is on one web page, but if this was on, like I say, 10 web pages, 250 web pages, 10,000 web pages. When you modify that one file, it will get modified everywhere. So basically, all we're doing here is we're creating the web page and then we're just referencing the iframe. So, so you can reference numerous iframes, the whole nine yards. If you want any more information, just to show you, this is www.w3schools.com. This is a very good reference. And here they have a lot of information on the different ways that you can modify one of these, uh, these iframes. You know, margin height, margin width, name, sandbox, scrolling, seamless, blah, blah, blah. You know, as with many HTML things, you have lots and lots and lots of options and the way I do these classes I can't show you every single option so if you want to try to try to futz with it you can come here and take a look at these things now if we go back though um, one of the things as I said so so that is how you can reuse code throughout your one website or throughout multiple websites so basically it goes back and it just grabs that HTML code from a file uh, and, and, and inserts that now now what you're going to be asking is like, yeah, well that's cute, Eli, that's nice, but that's not, what does that really have to do with anything? That's, that's not hacking, that, that's nice for a, for a few simple HTML things, but that's not hacking. Well, one of the interesting parts with the iframe is not only can you reference and include uh, simple HTML files, you can actually include scripts. So you can include JavaScript, you can include PHP script, you can include scripts so that when that, that iframe 
is is run that the script itself will actually run so you can do this to like log information about other websites you can use this to even run javascript uh, little scripts so what you'll notice down here is so i showed you the the, the first uh, iframe test so this is the iframe uh, for iframe.html here's where it's seamless here's the width well at the bottom here what you'll notice is i have an iframe that actually runs a script that I have at www.elithecomputerguy.com in the test folder and the script is called ip.php. Now the important thing that I want you to understand here is when you are looking at this file, right, look at the address location of this file. What is the address location of this file? This address location of this file is my C drive. This is on my desktop. This is not being run on a web server. This is not being run on www.elidthecomputerguy.com. This page right here is literally being run from my desktop. This specific file is double clicked and that is what is open. Well, if you'll notice here, that file is referencing a script sitting on my web server. So it's referencing a script an, on an entirely different server on the internet. Now, if we go over and look at the script that I put up here, this is a basic PHP script. You don't have to understand a lot of what's going on here. I'll just kind of walk you through it. All you have to understand is that this script does exist and it is being called and being run. So here we have a variable that I've named a dollar sign IP, and this grabs the IP address of the visitor that is looking at the current web page. Then I create a variable called dollar sign, sign time, and this is going to give me the Unix timestamp. So it's going to tell me the time that the website was looked at. Then I, what I do is I create a variable called log. What that does is combine the IP address and the time what this does is it allows me to actually write this information to a file and then I create a variable for the file. So what happens down here is what we do is we grab the IP address, we grab the time, we put that information into the file and we append it. So what's going to happen with this iframe is every time that the iframe is called, it is going to grab the IP address of whatever computer is, is, uh, is looking at that web page and it's going to take the time and it's going to write this to the log.txt file. So if we come up here, and so here, with this log.txt file, this file again is sitting on www.elithecomputerguy.com. It's not sitting locally, it's sitting up on my web server. So if we come here and we look at this web page that I've opened up, this says elithecomputerguy.com forward slash test forward slash log.txt. So again, this log file, file is an entirely different server, entirely different network out there on the internet. Well, what I can do here is I refresh this a couple times, then we go to this page and I hit refresh, and now it gives me the information that it grabbed. So it grabbed my external IP address, and then this is the Unix timestamp. So you would use this to actually turn it into a, a, a time that you can read. Just accept that as far as computers are concerned, this is, this is time. But basically you can see that every time I accessed this web page sitting on my computer, it went to that script sitting on my server and then logged the information. So every single time that I refresh or somebody opens this page, that information will be logged. So that's one of the first kind of little hacky type things you can do is you can try to track how people are using somebody else's website. So, so um, I had one of my fans asking about um, competitive intelligence and this is one of the things you can do. If you have a, a website that is competing with your website, if you can drop an iframe onto that website, you can start doing things like tracking the IP addresses of people who go there, you can see how long they're there, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. You could even do something like a drop a, a cookie using PHP onto their visitors 
and then try to track them through the internet. So the way you use this for hacking is, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those, again, it, with that kind of stuff, it's all artistic. But then you're probably sitting there and you're saying, well, Eli, you know, that's, that's, that's cool, but it's kind of lame at the same time. Okay, it's calling a PHP script, but what is the thing about PHP? PHP is a server-side language. So when you're calling that script, that script is being run on the server. So it can do certain things, but that's not, that's not really that powerful. That's not really that hacky, as you could say. I want something to run on the client side to try to manipulate the, uh, the end user's actual interaction so I can do something like grab information from them. So if we go back, what we can do is over here on this, this other page, I have this JavaScript file. So what I can do is I can take this script and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it here with this pip.php file, right? And then I'm going to save it. So what this JavaScript does, all this is, is a script type equals JavaScript. And then, you know, since, since I'm being simple here, all I want to have happen right now is a little pop-up box, will, will, will message box will display, and it'll say, all of your corgis are mine, and then in scripts. Now, the important thing to understand is that this is JavaScript, though. This is a client-side uh, scripting language, so this will actually, in fact, run on the client's computer. So right now, I have this with a simple alert, but you could have something pop up such as you have been logged out of the session, please put in your username and password. And they put in their username and password and then that information can be sent back to, uh, to your server. So if we go back and we go back to this test.html, all I have to do is I hit the refresh and the message box pops up. See, here it says, all your corgis are mine. So this JavaScript actually ran and all the information was pulled from my server at www.elithecomputerguy.com. So if you went to some kind of web page where they allowed you to insert in iframes for whatever reason, you could actually not just insert basic little text files such as your signature, but you could also use it to run scripts both on the server side and you can manipulate it so that it would run on the client side. So all this was done, um, like I say, is if we go here to, uh, to Notepad++, this, this JavaScript information was just added to the ip.php file. So that's really uh, all there is to iframes. This is one of those simple, simple, foolishly simple little tools that can be amazingly powerful. If you're a brand new novice web programmer, this is an absolutely awesome tool because again, stupid things like menu bars. I remember back in the days when we had to code out, if you wanted to create a menu, you had to actually hand code that or copy and paste it to every single page within a website. Now with iframes, you can create that menu once, you can post that to, uh, to all the different pages using the iframe tag, and if you want to modify it, you want to add an about page or take an about page away, you can simply go to that one I that, that file that's being referenced in the iframe tag and modify it there. If you want to start going to the more high-tech things, again, a lot of you guys want to try to do all this hacking and intelligence and all that kind of stuff, with the iframe, if you're able to put an iframe into somebody else's website, when that web page is run, that iframe uh, will run the script that is being pulled from the uh, from whatever server you have that script on. Now, the one thing that I will show you, just just to make sure you do realize this, is when you do call uh, the script when you're using the iframe, do make sure you use the seamless option here, the seamless argument. If you don't use the seamless argument, a weird little like little kind of like box pops up, and then people will wonder what that box is. So you just plug in seamless and the script will be triggered and the script will be run and then all all their corgis shall be yours as they say 
So this class was iframes in HTML for code reuse and hacking. Uh, I am Eli the Computer Guy. I enjoyed teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.